This video is just to walk through the import process to work with the data set from Netherlands to uh, use as a demonstration of mostly mapping, which is where errors tend to happen. It's impossible to say for certain if there's any issues. The data set that I'm working with here is a project from the Netherlands and this is all configured properly. These are the particular data that I see here that we are going to be trying to import from a spreadsheet which I uh, just made up a copy. And so what I did with this spreadsheet just to make this a little bit more clean is made a copy. So all I have is the trees, the data that's going to be imported and the top heading line 100 trees right here. So this will be the sheet else copy that I'm going to be using. I'm going to close that out for now. Um, so this data imported with six trees, we're trying to figure out why the remainder didn't upon the initial import. So what I'm going to do now is just delete these out just for this demonstration. So I'm just highlighting those and deleting that out so I have a clean project. Now Eco remembers those six trees, so it's going to probably start with tree seven just because that's the way it keeps track of trees. So in the import process, we did first need to go to trees and then the import button will be available. We now will navigate to the spreadsheet that we want to use. I'm working with this copy here. Uh, this is the dialog sheet, the import wizard, where you do most of the import work. Um, what we'll do here, first column, first we want to make sure we have the proper sheet. So I'm working with Al's copy, and that's just my simplified version. First row, column headers, yes we want that. And so now at this point here, this is the data that I want. I don't have any extra lines that cause any problems. Sometimes you might see that at the end where for some reason it picks up blank lines. Uh, let's just go ahead and hit next. Now this is the, the matching part or the mapping part. Uh, so what we want to do is tell Eco which fields we want to import and then match those to a field that's available in Eco. So this is the data from the spreadsheet. So I'm not going to mess around with the tree ID and I just work my way from left to right. So our species is first. We then come down here and click on species. So what I tend to do here is you have to make sure that if there's an option that you're selecting the proper option. And, and so this could be a potential place if you select something like this when you see these red exclamation points, it's looking for scientific name and common name. That's not available in here. And so that means you would then have to match these all up. Right now, we only just have scientific name. And usually when you see this, if you scroll down, if the data set's small, you're going to see some species that aren't going to match perfectly. This is normal, and we will just have to map these. So what you do every time you see these is you want to make sure that you have this box checked. And even if you don't see those, I still might do that because with a large data set, it's impossible to scroll through if you have 30,000, 60,000 trees. This is just 100 trees, so we'll be able to see these. And what this is saying is that we want the option to be able to map this field with Eco's fields once we're through with this step. And then we just work our way down. So stratum. Now, although this seems fairly cut and straight, everything here is urban. I also have this option. This is a description. There's no harm in checking this on because this just gives me one more option to check my data, which I'll show you at the second point when we do the mapping. So I will usually check this box for most fields just so I have a way of verifying that the number of trees that I'm trying to import are coming in properly. So I'm going to go through and then just connect up each one of these. Status. And again, I'm just checking that. Street tree, yes, no. So again, here is our red exclamation point. So this needs to be mapped. So we'll check that box. Land use. P. I believe this is the code. 
and I'm just checking my box again. Crown condition, this is a condition percentage. Total height. Crown top. Crown north south. One thing you'll notice when you select something from the drop down in the eco field, it should no longer appear there afterwards. So when I go to east west, I shouldn't see north south. That should be eliminated. So once it's matched up, um, it doesn't allow you to select it twice. So that could be a problem too if you select something incorrectly. It could be trying to route data to the uh, wrong field. And in that case, you just have to go back and reselect it. So if I mess this one up here, I would just simply go back and then change whichever one I wanted to change it to. Crown percent missing. Crown light exposure. Uh, public tree, yes, no. So in this case, it's going to need to be mapped because we have a, an option for that field. And I think that's all we have here. It is possible if you wanted to um, map the IDs but just keep in mind if there's any issues or one of these misses or is a problem, Eco then renumbers it. It doesn't um, allow you to force your own IDs in here. In project configuration, there actually is a way that you can assign tree IDs, but that's a separate field. So this is an option too if you, if you wanted to map your ID fields. So we'll proceed. So this is the mapping part, and what this is showing me is what I look for here in the status is 100 of 100 values are being connected. Same thing with stratum. So urban, urban is all we have here, 101, status, in growth, and you notice if you click on this, you'll see the other options that are available. So if there's a misspelled word that you happen to have in your data and I see zero of one, that allows me then to map it properly. So species, so this one here we're missing uh, four species. So when you come down to species matching you have to click on the empty field. There's over 7,000, 8,000 species in here so it takes a little bit of time to populate. So I clicked on that field and now I'm kind of waiting and eventually what we'll see is species listed there. So there we go. Now what this allows you to do, you really can only select the first letter. So if I change it to B, then I have all the B's here. So if I go back to A, then I have to scroll down and find an Aeschylus species to match this to. And for some of these, you're not going to find the exact a hybrid and in these cases you're going to have to select one that's available. There is a way using iTree database that you could submit new species but uh, at this point you're going to have to select one and then if you ever want to add new species it takes time usually months before those become available you can come back to your project and then uh, change species when it becomes available. So if you notice I actually selected that species and again here I click down where it says Betula pendula it takes time so you can see that there's a little bit of lag because it's populating it. Now it turns orange meaning that it's populated and I can go ahead and map this Betula pendula tree. And in 
this case I don't have that specific uh, cultivar so I'm just going to choose this one here. And the Platanus. So once again I click the next one. There's a little bit of a delay. I wait for the Betula to turn orange and then it should allow me to continue on. There we go. So now I've got to go through the Platanus. We'll type in P, so move me down to the P's. We'll look for Platanus options here. is large so it takes uh, a little bit of movement moves you far off so we don't have this particular hybrid Platanus Hispanica so we can either choose Platanus genus or we can choose I believe this is a, a version of a London plane so that will be up to you to select that one Tilia. So right here now I see 15 of 16 up at the top here have been matched. Once I move my cursor out of here to the next tree this should change to 16 of 16 values. So this is how I ensure that the data that I have in the spreadsheet is being brought into and being mapped. And so this is again, you know, this is a result of checking that box just for mapping. It allows me to verify each one of these if there's a decimal or some issue if you're using commas and for some reason that's causing problems you might see something here where it says 045 or that might will that will let you know it requires mapping so again I just go through these fields to see that everything 14 of 14 4 of 4 45 keep scrolling down because there's more here 14 to 14 for crown 11 11 13 of 13 so all these values look good. Five sides. So this one, zero, one. So this one needs to be mapped. So we've got no, we've got to let eco know that that no equals no. So although you, that would seem like that should map properly, it doesn't. And so we have to fill that in so that it uh, picks that up. Now, every single one of these, I've got values accounted for. So we'll hit next. So we've done all our mapping as best we can. And this is the point right here. When you get to this point, if you see 100 and 100, this lets you know that that's what's going to be imported in. Um, it's really difficult with larger data sets to try to see why something failed. Again, if you go back and you do the scrolling and look for check boxes or, check, or the exclamation marks, I should say, that's usually the problematic data set. So we'll finish. It does the importing process. So it's picking up some blank lines here for some reason. Yeah, so when I open up the original data set, I can see my first line here was uh, Fagus Sylvatica, 12 inch DBH, 15, 16, and so 12, 15, 16. So those trees all came in, but for some reason there was a blank line, whether this was a residual from when I deleted out the, the um, 
previous data that was in there that could have caused some problems. So I'm just going to go ahead and delete that. And at this point here, now I'm going to check my data. And it tells me that tree 85 has an invalid crown width or top height. So we'll go and investigate that one. So tree 85 is an English holly. And what it's saying here, and this is what you want to look for is any red exclamation marks, is that it has zero, zero in the crown width. Um, so that's something that uh, is indicating that it's either a dead tree, but the crown condition doesn't indicate as such. So chances are there could be either a value or something wrong with the, the data. So although that was tree 85, again, this is going to, um, or 84, I believe, that's actually 78 in the original data set. And these are all 0, 0, 0. So either the, this has to be dead, which would mean that the crown condition would be zero, or there should be some value for these. So I don't know what this should be, so for now I'm just going to make it two, just so I can get past this error. You can verify that as, as needed. And then if I go back and check data again, crown base, so there's a height. This tells this, this may indicate that that's uh, not proper either, I don't know. Um, that can be verified. This says this is at the ground level for the base height. And at that point, we should be able to submit this data for processing. Um, the other thing I can do here, too, is just to check the project metadata. So we've got 100 trees in this, and at this point, I can go ahead and submit this for processing. So I'll stop this video here and uh, I'll post this so that you can kind of see where this is. But again, the importing part, the mapping part, there's so many different ways to do that. It's impossible to look at a data set and say that there's always some mapping that's going to be required in these. So for me, there's no way of knowing unless I absolutely sit behind you while you're doing this or watch you over um, video to see where something could have gone wrong. And then there's the issues of uh, how your computer operates in different languages and so forth. That could be causing problems that I can't replicate. But hopefully this will give you an idea of uh, how I do this and how I navigate through some of the um, quirky parts of ECO that can be challenging.